This is Twit. Winning this week's prize for the most listener reported incident was a very worrisome uh, software supply chain event. Um, I don't think it qualifies for being called an attack since it was an inside job. Uh, consequently, most of the tech press is using the term sabotage. Um, NPM is the package manager we've discussed from time to time for today's number one most popular, most used, and most in-demand programming language, huh, JavaScript. NPM is the default package manager for JavaScript's super popular runtime environment, Node.js. And a very prominent Node module known as Node-IPC, as in interprocess communication, uh, which is commonly used for local and remote interprocess communication, which has support for Linux, Mac OS, and Windows, uh, is the subject here. Node IPC has over 1.1 million downloads per week, which puts it up at the high end of popularity. In the context of Java's, now not JavaScript, Java's log for j incident and vulnerability, we were talking about code dependency trees. The idea being that one software library relies upon several others, and they may rely upon others, etc., creating this rapidly branching tree, uh, which has the effect of creating a deep set of interdependencies. Lyron, ha uh, Lyron Tal at Sync S N or I don't know how you pronounce S N Y K. Snike? I'll say Sync. <laughs> Snike? Yeah, maybe. I hope it's not Snike. That'd be bad. Where do you work? I work at Snike. Snike. It's like what? On purpose? Deliberately? Okay. Anyway, he was the first to report their discovery of this problem. Um, Liren wrote. He said. On March 15th, 2022, users of the popular Vue.js front-end JavaScript framework started experiencing what can only be described as a supply chain attack impacting the NPM ecosystem. This was the result of the nested dependencies Node IPC and Peace Not War being sabotaged as an act of protest by the maintainer of the node IPC package. He said this security incident involves destructive acts of corrupting files on disk by one maintainer and their attempts to hide and restate that deliberate sabotage in different forms. While this is an attack with protest-driven motivations, it highlights a larger issue facing the software supply chain, that the transitive dependencies in your code can have a huge impact on your security. Okay, so the, the, story, the story started back on March 8th, um, at which time NPM maintainer for this package R.I.A. Evangelist is his handle. His real-world name is Brandon Nozaki Miller. He wrote um, some code and published an NPM package named Peace Not War, presumably referring to the, what's going on over in Ukraine. Um, and that package describes itself, quote, This code serves as a non-destructive example of why controlling your node modules is important. It also serves as a nonviolent protest against Russia's aggression that threatens the world right now. This module will add a message of peace on your users' desktops, <laughs> and it will only do it if it does not already exist just to be polite. Unquote. Okay, now... First of all, it's interesting that Brandon writes that he'll only place his anti-war message on desktops that have not already received the message, quote, just to be polite, 
uh, because what Brandon then does is anything but polite. His peace, not war package sat around for a week with hardly any downloads. Then he adds this peace, not war module as a dependency to one of his other very popular modules. He apparently he has 40 that he's maintaining. In this case, he added it to the dependency of node-ipc, which caused it to get sucked down 1.1 million times per week. Then, apparently, still getting even more amped up, over the Russia-Ukraine conflict and feeling that he has the power to be more proactive, Brandon added some deliberately Base64 obfuscated sabotage code to his node-IPC package. This updated release added a function to check the IP address of the developers who were using node IPC in their own projects. When an IP address geolocated to either Russia or Belarus is found, the new version wiped the file contents from the machine, replacing them with a heart emoji. Okay, now... Well, at least there's <laughs> love involved. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is obviously quite a lot that's wrong about this. Mm. Uh, but on top of it just being plain wrong, to take advantage of one's implicitly trusted position as a package maintainer, to have one's package do something that it was clearly not sanctioned to do, Brandon's targets were being very poorly chosen. If we're to believe what we're told about the war sentiments of the Russian population, it's the younger coders and developers who are more likely to be using Russian propaganda bypassing measures and to have a much more Western view of what's actually happening over there. And along comes some idiot in the West who wipes out a sympathetic developer's files only because of where they are coding. And I should mention it's not in the show notes, but the EFF just went <laughs> ballistic over this. <laughs> I mean, whoa. Um, you know, and sad as all that is, even more sadly, Brandon is not alone. The count of similarly recently altered software has risen to 21 incidents separately having been identified. I noted as I looked through the list, it was in Russian, so I wasn't able to read the details, but I could see that the popular GUI toolkit QT was on the list, up near the top, actually. And another is ES5-EXT, which provides code for the ECMAScript 6 scripting language specification. A new dependency named postinstall.js, which the developer added on March 7th, checks to see if the user's computer has a Russian IP address, in which case the code broadcasts a call for peace, whatever that is. So while not all of these changes are destructive, as Brandon's ended up evolving into, they are almost certainly not what those who are using them want or have every right to expect. Now, Brandon quickly removed his malicious changes after the very predictable outcry arose from other en enraged developers. Um, but boy, you know, he has certainly not enhanced his credibility or reputation. And, you know, as I said, it does also point out what is probably a larger problem with the fact that we, we have... We, we, we've ended up putting ourselves in a position where we are trusting in the goodwill and the ongoing goodwill and like the unfaltering behavior of lots of random developers whose software we're using. And we link it into a dependency tree and our code grabs it 
no matter what it is, assuming that it's going to stay what it was before. And, of course, we have no guarantee of that being the case. So, yikes.